Hi guys, if you have worked on Kubernetes, I'm sure you've heard of OpenShift. OpenShift is a Red Hat product. Now, a lot of companies who want to deploy applications on a Kubernetes deploy it on a solution like OpenShift because OpenShift is production ready from day one. You can also use Kubernetes in production, but that takes a while. You need to set up a lot of stuff. We generally like to think that Kubernetes is an engine, but you can't use an engine directly. You need to build the other parts in order to create the car. OpenShift, however, is what we call a car. You can use it from day one itself. There is nothing for you to build. If you are looking to go with OpenShift training in the future, or if you want to just practice OpenShift, then I'm sure you want to create a cluster. And using the OpenShift cluster, you can practice our OpenShift concepts. However, a, pro a production grade OpenShift cluster requires a lot of resources to run. I have already created a video on how we can create an OpenShift production cluster. But in case you do not have a lot of resources available, in that case, you can also create a little OpenShift cluster for development and testing purpose. This is known as OpenShift local. Uh, previously, we used to call it code ready containers but now we have renamed it to OpenShift Local. This is the equivalent of Minikube in Kubernetes, right? So we can use OpenShift Local on our laptops if you want to go in the future with the OpenShift training or the OpenShift certification. OpenShift Local has lower number of requirements. As you can see on the screen, you can run this on RHEL 8 or RHEL 9. If you have a 32 GB partition available at the slash home directory with 4 CPU and 9 GB of RAM and obviously internet. OpenShift Local creates a virtual machine within your virtual machine and that virtual machine contains OpenShift. So it also requires virtualization enabled on the VMware level or your hypervisor level, whichever hypervisor you are using. In this particular video, I want to show you how you can install OpenShift local and start using it for your training purpose. The first thing we need to do is create a virtual machine. Once we have the virtual machine created, then we can start by downloading the OpenShift local packages and installing them and also download any other prerequisite there is. I have created a GitHub repository that you can read to understand the steps that you will have to follow to get this running. I'll share the link in the description where you can see I have already given the commands required. The first thing we need to do is install the dependencies where we are installing three packages, Network Manager, LibWord and the Kimu KVM package. So let's just copy this command and then we are going to run this on our virtual machine. And we'll put sudo because we are a normal user. We use OpenShift local via a normal user. We don't use it via the root user. It will not work if you try to run it as a root user. So as you can see here, the packages are already installed in my case. In your case, they will get installed. Once the packages are installed, the next thing you need is a Red Hat account. If you have given a Red Hat certification in the past, then you can use that same account for this purpose as well. Otherwise, you can create a free account on their website. And once that account is created, you can go to this URL that's console.redhat.com slash openshift slash create slash local. And on this URL, you can download the packages. So this is what the URL will look like. It will have three options. You can create the cluster on the cloud on the data center that's an on-prem prod cluster or a local cluster for testing purpose. We are using the local cluster here. Again, there is a video on the prod cluster that I've created in the past. You can check that out from the link in description. Now what we'll do is, we'll choose our operating system. So we can install this on Linux, Mac or Windows. And we'll download the packages and also download the pull secret. The pull secret is basically an authentication that we require to start the cluster properly. So what we'll do is, we'll download the packages and copy them to our virtual machine. So here are the files, pullsecret.txt and the CRC package. We can extract the CRC package. And this will provide me with the CRC command. I can go inside the directory 
and here is that command available. We can copy this binary to our uh, executable path. For example, I have copied this to USR local pin, so we can do that here. So I can do a cpcrc to USR local pin. I will require the sudo privilege again, and I can also do a sudo ch mode plus x usr local bin crc this will allow me to run the crc command from anywhere on the system the next thing i want to do here is configure crc so openshift local can collect data and send it to red hat you can choose whether you want to do that or whether you do not want to do that so we have again the command available here which is crc config and this command can be used to change how OpenShift local is going to behave. So I can do a yes if I want to send data to Red Hat or I can do a no if I don't want to do that. Once this is done, we can download the CRC files or the OpenShift local files using the CRC setup command and press enter. This will check if the virtual machine has all the packages required to do this and download anything that is missing. For example, the OpenShift bundle, which contains the nested virtual machine is missing right now. And this will start downloading depending upon your internet speed. This can take a while because this is 4.6 GB approximately. So this can take you approximately, let's say 10 minutes or 20 minutes to do this. And we will have to wait for this process to finish before we move forward to the next part. Okay, so now that we can see that OpenShift is almost done downloading and extracting the files, we can now start with the starting of the OpenShift cluster. We can tell the, the CRC command to start the cluster. To do that, you will simply run CRC start hyphen P full secret dot txt. However, the default cluster that runs, runs with different requirements. For example, if you take a look at the diagram, the default cluster uses 4 CPU and 9 GB of RAM, which is enough for if you're going to run Nginx or Apache or any sample application. But if you're looking to do more development and testing, in that case, you might require more resources. So we can tell OpenShift local to not use a default resource, but higher resource. So we can do a CRC, we can run CRC config set. CPUs and tell how many CPUs to use, for example, six. And CRC config set memory, how much RAM to use? Let's say 12,000. So that's approximately, approximately 12 GB of RAM. Once this is done, now I can finally run a CRC start, hyphen p full cigarette.txt and press enter. Now this will again take a while to start the cluster depending upon your virtual machine RAM and CPU. And once the cluster has started, it's going to prompt you with your cluster credentials and the steps to log in into the cluster. So we will again wait for this process to finish. After waiting for almost 15 minutes, we can finally see the output. And we have an error with us, which is cluster is not ready. Operators are still not stable after 10 minutes, 32 seconds, which would suggest that a cluster has not started properly. However, the OpenShift cluster has a lot of components and due to limited resources, it is often possible that all components don't start before the timeout of 10 minutes. However, they ultimately do end up starting. So in case you get one of these errors, it's fine. Run the CRC status command to check whether OpenShift is running or not running. And if you run the command, we'll wait for the output. We can see that OpenShift is actually running. So the error that came earlier can be ignored. And we can run eval crc oc hyphen env. This will put the OpenShift client binary in your executable path. And once this is done, you can finally log in into the cluster. The credentials to log in into the cluster are given to us. The username is kubeadmin and this is your password. There is another user, which is a developer user with less privileges that can also be used. 
and in case you were not able to uh, see your credentials you cleared the screen or you got disconnected no worries at all just run the command crc console hyphen hyphen credentials and this will again show you your credentials we can copy the two admin credentials and we'll copy the entire command we'll paste it and press enter wait for the output if we get any errors then we can also troubleshoot those errors we don't have any errors and we have su successfully logged in into openshift oc get nodes command shows you that there is a single node cluster which is ready and now you can do your openshift operations such as creating projects or what you call namespaces and deploying applications in it if you want to stop the cluster you can run the crc stop command for example if you have deployed a bunch of resources for testing or training purpose after which you want to start fresh from a fresh cluster in that case you can run crc stop this will stop the cluster and after this you can also run a crc delete to delete the cluster and then when you start the cluster again you will start with a brand new cluster so if you want to get a clear cluster every single time you will start your practice then this step can be utilized i hope this video makes sense to you and you use this for your openshift training and development purpose also check out the real life production installation video that i have linked in the description that's going to be very useful to understand the openshift installation process